battery manufacturers across the entire globe are looking at these new developments, this new news that just came out literally 45 minutes ago, and probably thinking to themselves, oh no, the South Korean automotive industry is now deeply entrenched in the battery manufacturing sector. They invested hundreds of billions of dollars into making batteries. But because of China's emerging dominance in this field, their capacity utilization is less than 50%. That number is going to drop even further. It's not just South Korea, though, that's in trouble. Anyone competing against CATL, the world's largest battery manufacturer, has to be looking on in fear. Customers are not, though. Customers are looking at this news going, wow. Holy hell, wow. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. And this is the battery technology that will disrupt everyone and anything. And I mean, it won't just disrupt EVs. It will disrupt the entire global battery storage market, the entire fossil fuels market. I mean, think about the cost advantages of having batteries half the price versus today's lithium ion phosphate batteries with higher energy density than many of them and a lifespan lasting literally three to five times longer and the capacity to work in temperatures at its lowest minus 40 degrees Celsius. Uh, did I mention they're cheaper? Um, yeah, this is very scary if you are the competition. YouTube's new algorithm means that you're often not getting all of our videos in your feed. There's 7,500. I'm pretty sure you're probably not seeing a lot of them. In the description, there is a link to our newsletter. Click on that and you can get an update every day of all the latest news in the electric car industry. I did a video, in fact, two videos on these batteries, but we have some new news since then. And I think since then, I've noticed a lot of comments on social media online of people saying, oh yeah, um, these are going to be the future. I think there's, it's inevitable. But there was news released today saying that these batteries have been tested. I'll get to some of the testing in a minute. What actually happens, there's a new battery standard in China. This will be officially implemented on the 1st of July, 2026. It's meant to eliminate fire risks in electric cars. The Chinese government has strict rules now for thermal runaway. There has to be Thermal runaway protection that basically means batteries cannot set themselves on fire. Uh, in a, even, in, even in the situation of an accident, there has to be a situation where the car won't just incinerate itself. Apparently, Cadle's uh, Naxtra sodium ion battery demonstrated safety performance at both cell and battery pack levels, successfully passing all tests. The Naxtra battery not only reduces dependence on lithium, it uses sodium instead, but it solves one of the biggest problems with lithium batteries, particularly lithium ion phosphate. But to be honest, with all lithium batteries, that is performance in very, very cold temperatures, also performance in very hot temperatures as well. In really cold regions, lithium ion phosphate batteries, I mean, I just want to set the record straight here. There's recent news in um, from Australian journalists one particular clickbaiter from Car Expert claiming that um, your battery will lose up to 40% of its range in Australia when it's cold. That is complete bullshit. That is just an utter lie intended to get as many clicks as possible. But in very, very cold temperatures, I'm talking minus 40 degrees Celsius, which we've never seen in Australian history, yes, you could lose up to 40%, even 50% in that situation. That's a different story. So there are many places around the world where it does get very, very cold during winter. And that's when EVs can have challenges with, well, being able to have the same amount of battery range left in your car. Cadel announced in April, it's Naxtra sodium ion battery is capable of maintaining 90% of its usable capacity at temperatures as low as minus 40 degrees Celsius and as high as plus 60 degrees Celsius meaning it has the best operational life of any battery in the world in terms of handling cold temperatures and hot temperatures. The other thing is, sodium ion batteries, their energy density has not been very good. In fact, it's been horrendous for a long time. But over the past six months, that has begun to change. 
These batteries have an energy density of 175 watt hours per kilogram. To give you some context, the Bilbidi's Blade battery is 160 watt hours per kilogram. So these are gonna be less than half the price of Bilbidi's Blade batteries, have higher energy density, operate in extreme temperatures and lose barely any range, um, and have a lifespan three to five times longer than other lithium ion phosphate batteries that we know of from testing. And when I say lifespan, what I mean is this, Cadle is saying that after 3.6 million miles of driving, the batteries will still have 80% of their original capacity, 3.6 million miles. We have never heard of anything like this before. There has never been a battery in history that's done anything like this before. But this information coming from the world's largest battery company who have never made anything up, never made fake promises like Toyota and Nissan with solid state batteries, never lied about their products, but actually just go out there and do it and produce it, make things happen very quickly. That's why this is all very scary for the automotive industry and good for customers. It's gonna, in fact, it's good for the planet. It's gonna bring down the cost of energy storage enormously. It's gonna bring down the cost of electric cars. Electric cars will be significantly cheaper than internal combustion within the space of five years. The entire world will be drastically changed because of sodium ion batteries. And I said this, in fact, I did a video, one of my most popular videos, I said this four years ago, uh, and it's now happening. So these batteries apparently have peak charging rates as well of 5C. In other words, they can probably charge at approximately 400 to 500 kilowatt. Yeah, I mean, just another little added extra bonus if all the other stuff I told you already wasn't enough to convince you that this is the future. There's another one, right? In addition, they have a lifespan exceeding 10,000 cycles. Now, when they say the lifespan exceeds 10,000 cycles, they're not referring to how long the battery lasts for. They're actually referring to how long it lasts for without going below 80% battery degradation. When you hear that, um, it kind of changes your perspective a little bit, doesn't it? 10,000, yeah? I mean, who is gonna do that many cycles in an electric car? I don't think anyone ever will in one car, unless you bought it when you were 18 and then you kept driving it until you were 88. Yeah, you see my point? These batteries will be used forever. I mean, the electric cars in them, Basically, they'll be just um, probably sitting around powering households for the next 50 years. So, Cadle, where are they going to use these batteries first? Well, they're already apparently using them or have begun manufacturing them for their battery swapping business. And they are building out battery swapping locations, much like NEO is in China. They have 105 new stations and they activated 103 stations in August alone. I don't know why Cato think that these are needed, uh, battery swapping stations. They clearly believe that this will become a big part of China's car industry, which is interesting. So Cato, Neo, and in fact, Cherry as well, are investing billions of dollars into battery swapping stations. There you can drive your car in, and in three minutes, or three to four minutes, you can get your battery pack swapped out with a, a new sodium ion battery in there. The irony is, I mean, if you're getting your battery swapped out, you probably don't own the battery. Uh, you know, a lot of people just do it as a rent rental service. And you're not going to give a shit if the batteries last for a million years and have all these amazing benefits. You're just going to be like, oh, it's a battery, whatever. I'm not paying for it. That's the irony. So it's being used in a situation where I don't think customers are going to care too much unless they're living in really cold locations and then they're going to care for sure. So is this really the future of the automotive industry? Do you guys agree with me? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching.